Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us. And we're very pleased to have this, our latest in the Rewards for Justice uh, series of briefings. I'm very pleased to introduce uh, Assistant Secretary for Diplomatic Security, Mr. Michael Evanoff, uh, Assistant Secretary of the Treasury, Mr. Marshall Billingsley, and our Ambassador at Large for Counterterrorism, Ambassador Nathan Sales. The biographies are in the briefing announcements, so I won't quote from them here. I'll just note that since 1984, the United States government has paid more than $150 million to over 100 people who have provided actionable information that put terrorists behind bars or prevented acts of international terrorism worldwide under the Rewards for Justice program. A few words about the order. This event is on the record. We'll have brief remarks from all three principals, and then we'll come back for a brief Q&A. And with that, I'll turn it over to Assistant Secretary Evanoff. Good afternoon. Today, the U.S. Department of State's Rewards for Justice program is offering a new reward offer up to $10 million U.S. million for the information leading to the disruption of financial activities that support the global terrorist organization Lebanese Hezbollah. This announcement marks the first time that the department has offered a reward for the information on Hezbollah financial networks. The Lebanese-based terrorist organization, which the State Department designated as a foreign terrorist organization in October 1997, receives weapons, training, funding from Iran. The Secretary of State designated Iran as a state sponsor of terrorism in 1984. In previous years, Hezbollah has generated about $1 billion annually through direct financial support from Iran international businesses and investments, donor networks, and money laundering activities. The group uses these funds to support its malign activities throughout the world, which includes the development of militia to Syria in the support of Assad dictatorship, and to Yemen in support of the Iran-aligned Houthi rebels, surveillance and intelligence gathering operations in an American homeland, and enhanced military capabilities, including its claim to possess precision-guided missiles. Such terrorist operations are funded through Hezbollah's international network of financial supporters and activities. We intend to stem that critical flow of money using the reward offer, as well as sanctions and other tools available to the U.S. government. We urge anyone with information on Hezbollah financial networks to contact the Rewards for Justice program via the RFJ website at rewardsforjustice.net or via email at lh at rewardsforjustice.net. Individuals outside the United States may also contact the nearest U.S. Embassy or consulate. All information submitted to us will be kept strictly confidential. What sort of information are we seeking? We are welcome any information that leads to the identification and disruption of Hezbollah's financial mechanisms and individuals who manage or facilitate them. The Rewards for Justice program has been an effective law enforcement tool in our fight against international terrorism since its inception in 1984. To date, the program has paid in excess of 150 million U.S. dollars to more than 100 individuals who provide information that prevented international attacks, terrorist attacks, or helped to bring terrorists to justice. I'm confident that the word offer that we are offering today, announcing today, will provide incentive for people to come forward with information that will help us take down Hezbollah's financial networks. Now I'd like to turn the microphone over to my Department of Treasury colleague, Assistant Secretary Marshall Billingsley, who will speak about Hezbollah's financial funding mechanisms, and type of financial information we are seeking. Marshall. Thanks, Mike. <clears throat> Good afternoon, <clears throat> and I want to give a special thanks to Assistant Secretary uh, Ivanov and to Ambassador Sales for working so closely with the Department of the Treasury in launching this most important program. We're pl proud to play a role in this effort <clears throat> as a means to further expose and uh, financially isolate this terrorist group. Make no mistake, the United States government will use all available tools to extinguish Hezbollah's sources of revenue. We will also target any and all financial means of the group 
and its masters in Iran, and every mechanism that they together use to support terrorist activities in the Middle East and, in fact, around the world. Since 2017, the Treasury has moved at an unprecedented rate to disrupt Hezbollah's financial activities and denied access to the global financial system. We've designated more than 40 individuals and entities working behind the scenes as well with friendly nations, scores of countries, to close down Hezbollah-controlled companies, money exchanges, and laundering operations. From Argentina and Paraguay to the Gambia to Dubai, we've worked with friendly governments to roll up these financing networks. In fact, nowhere better can the impact of our efforts be seen than in the statements of Hezbollah's Secretary General, Hassan Nasrallah. Last month, Nasrallah, for the first time publicly, bemoaned Hezbollah's financial situation and claimed that the financial warfare of the Treasury Department was taking its toll. In fact, he's stooping to new lows, recently resorting to exploiting charitable donations and diverting that funding to its fighters, as well as relying on political coercion and intimidation to squeeze Lebanon's financial sector and mortgage Lebanon's future. Today's reward initiative, I'm going to talk about three specific Hezbollah financiers. We will leave no stone unturned in our pursuit of information that will help us clamp down further on these individuals and on others they use to access the international financial system, either directly or via cash smuggling networks and other seemingly legitimate businesses and investments. As part of today's launch, we highlight, as I mentioned, these three individuals, Adam Tabaja, Mohammed Ibrahim Bazi, and Ali Yusuf Charara. Together, these individuals comprise key parts of Hezbollah's financial modus operandi, and they have networks that span four continents with links to the formal financial sector as well as the drug trade and corrupt foreign governments. The first, Adam Tabaja, once ruled a vast commercial and construction investment network across the Middle East. Tabaja and his network attempt to maintain direct ties to senior Hezbollah leadership, as well as the group's terrorist operational arm, the Islamic Jihad and they tap into Tabaja's network for financial aid and support. Tabaja was designated by the Treasury in 2015, and since then, we have gone after three branches of his business. We've worked with foreign governments to dismantle his companies in the Ghana, in Iraq, Lebanon, and Sierra Leone. Next is Ali Youssef Charara, who acted as Hezbollah's personal wealth manager, both inside and outside of Lebanon. Charara received millions of dollars from Hezbollah, which he then used to invest on, on its behalf in the oil and telecommunications sector in Iraq, Europe, and West Africa. Treasury designated Charara and his Lebanese-based company, Spectrum Investment Group Holdings SAL, in 2016, and we continue to pursue his network globally. Last is Mohammed Ibrahim Bazi, who provided Hezbollah with millions of dollars from his transcontinental business holdings. He leveraged his political relationships to build a vast petroleum, mining, milling, and energy services empire that again spanned Europe, the Middle East, and Africa, all to Hezbollah's benefit. Bazi's now struggling to maintain his business ties to Belgium, Benin, Cote d'Ivoire, Iraq, the Gambia, Lebanon, and Sierra Leone. He's also worked closely with the Central Bank of Iran to expand banking access between Lebanon and Iran, and has leveraged a close personal relationship with the ousted former Gambian dictator Yahya Jame to reestablish political ties between the Gambia and Iran. Treasury designated Bazi and his companies in May of 2018. Tabaja, Charara, and Bazi collectively represent several diverse streams of funding by which Hezbollah has raised and laundered millions of dollars. They have leveraged political ties with corrupt regimes and often gained unfair, monopolistic control over state industries. The interconnectedness between their global networks of seemingly legitimate businesses and Hezbollah including its operational units, make it critically important that their access to the international financial system be permanently severed. However, as prominent as these three may be, by no means are they the only Hezbollah financiers we pursue. The United States government seeks information related to any Hezbollah financial source, as well as any financial institution, whether it be a bank, an exchange house, a hawala, or a business that Hezbollah uses to raise or move money. The way that Hezbollah's money-making apparatus operates, using both the formal and the informal financial sector, leaves a transnational paper trail that implicates scores of individuals and companies. And in support of today's Rewards for Justice program, again, the United States government seeks any and all information that helps us uncover these financial activities and which leads us to financial disruption. 
This includes specifically information on incorporation and shareholder documents. We will pay for bank records, customs forms, real estate transactions, and anything evidencing money laundering or cash smuggling. As detailed by the Assistant Secretary, the United States government is prepared to pay for this information, and we will award up to $10 million for leads that result in financial disruption, whether by U.S. law enforcement, sanctions, or other enforcement actions. I reiterate, we will pay up to $10 million for information that leads to disruption of Hezbollah's financial networks. In closing, I thank our partners at the State Department, and I extend, uh, as well as extending our support to all of those who ultimately will come forward under this program with information that further clamps down on this terrorist group's financial network. And I now have the pleasure of turning over to Ambassador Sales, who will put Hezbollah's financial activity into the broader context of this administration's counterterrorism mission. Ambassador. Good afternoon, everyone. We're talking about Hezbollah today, but any conversation about Hezbollah must begin in Tehran. Iran remains the world's leading state sponsor of terrorism. This is a reprehensible distinction that the regime has held since 1984. The regime spends nearly a billion dollars a year on its terrorist proxies around the world, and that includes up to $700 million for Hezbollah alone. Of course, Iran does more than just support terrorism. It actively engages in terrorism itself. <clears throat> and it's an outlaw regime that uses terrorism as a fundamental tool of its statecraft. That's why Secretary Pompeo recently designated Iran's IRGC as a foreign terrorist organization, the first time we have ever designated another state entity as an FTO. Today's announcement is equally unprecedented. It's the first time the State Department has issued an RFJ offer <clears throat> focused solely on Hezbollah financing. This offer is another step in our unrelenting campaign against Tehran and its terrorist proxies around the world. Let me say a few words about the threat that Hezbollah poses and why we're intensifying our financial pressure on this dangerous terrorist group. Hezbollah has a truly global reach. It has operatives, financiers, front companies, and other assets in Lebanon, in the Gulf, in Africa, in Asia, in Europe, and in the Western Hemisphere. It likes to masquerade as the defender of the Lebanese people, but we know it for what it is, a group whose true agenda is global terrorism. In the Middle East, Hezbollah is actively working to prop up the brutal Assad dictatorship in Syria and it's applying the lessons it learned in Syria to create and sustain violent militias loyal to Iran throughout the region. We're seeing this pattern play out in Bahrain, in Iraq, and in Yemen. Make no mistake, Hezbollah and their Iranian masters want to turn these proud and sovereign nations into Iranian vassals. Hezbollah's reach is not limited to the Middle East. It continues to actively plot and carry out terrorist attacks around the world. Hezbollah activity has been uncovered in recent years in places like Azerbaijan, Bulgaria, Cyprus, Nigeria, Panama, Peru, and Thailand. The United States is not immune to this threat. In 2017, two suspected Hezbollah operatives were arrested in New York and Michigan. We believe they were conducting surveillance of US government facilities as well as the Panama Canal. The good news, Hezbollah is feeling the pinch. As our sanctions on the Iranian regime have taken hold, Hezbollah has had to tighten its collective belt. The group's Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah is now publicly soliciting donations. The resistance needs your support, he says. Resistance, that's his word, not ours. That's why today's reward offer is so important. If Hezbollah can't count on the same levels of support from Tehran, the group increasingly will need to raise money to support terrorism itself. And this administration will use every tool at our disposal to dismantle Hezbollah's global financing network. Today's announcement is part of our broader campaign to hit Hezbollah in the wallet and deny it the resources it needs to spread terrorism around the world. Let me give you a few examples. 
since 2017, the State Department has used our terrorism designation authorities to, to designate a number of top Hezbollah leaders. They include the following. Jawad Nasrallah, the son of Hassan Nasrallah and a rising leader in the organization. Mustafa Magnia, a Hezbollah commander. Ali Damush, leader of Hezbollah's Foreign Relations Department. Hashem Safadin, a key member of Hezbollah's Executive Council. In addition, in 2015, we designated the operatives who carried out the 2012 bombing in Bulgus, Bulgaria, Burgas, Bulgaria, which killed five Israeli tourists and their Bulgarian driver. In addition, we've previously offered multi-million dollar RFJ offers for key Hezbollah figures. They include Fuad Shukr, a senior Hezbollah operative who played a central role in the 1983 bombing of the U.S. Marine barracks in Beirut. Talah Hamia, head of Hezbollah's external security organization. Khalil Yusuf Mahmoud Harb, a close advisor to Hassan Nasrallah. And Haytham Ali Tabatabai, a senior commander of Hezbollah's special forces in Syria and in Yemen. The point of this campaign is clear, and the point of today's announcement is clear. We will continue to increase the financial pressure and impose costs on the Iranian regime and its terrorist proxies until they abandon their malign and outlaw behavior. Thank you all very much. Thank you very much, Ambassador. I know we have a lot of veterans here, but if I can quickly go over house rules, uh, please wait for a microphone. Please identify yourself by name and outlet, and please limit yourself to one question at the outset. We'll take some down here and then go to New York. New York, please stand by. We'll start right here with Joyce. Uh, uh, yes, hi, thank you. Joyce Karam with The National. Uh, thanks for a very busy Monday. Um, you mentioned that you have a transnational paper trail that implicates companies. Um, any intention to reveal the names of these companies? And will you be going after these companies or, you know, allies of Hezbollah who might be helping in financing efforts? Thanks for the question. <clears throat> exactly my point. The way Hezbollah operates leaves a paper trail. And what we are offering today for the first time is a rewards program that is designed to pay individuals for information like the kinds of documents I mentioned that leads to disruption of Hezbollah finances. Uh, let's take this one here and we'll go to New York. Heba Nasr, Sky News Arabia. I want to ask about the sanctions against Hezbollah allies in Lebanon. We have heard that in the media that you're going to sanction some allies. And uh, you met also a parliamentary delegation last week in, uh, here in Washington, Lebanese parliamentary delegation. What was the mes message from Washington to Lebanon? Well, so to begin with, I'm not going to talk about future sanctions activities. Uh, other than to say that I did uh, meet with a parliamentary delegation, the, the nature of the discussions is, of course, confidential between governments. But uh, what's very important to understand is we are focused on Hezbollah, not on the Shia community. We are focused on Hezbollah and on cutting this cancer out of the financial system. All right, we'll go to New York and then here. James, go Hi ahead. Hi there, can you hear me? Uh, lean into the mic a little bit more, please. Hi, can you hear me, guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, thanks very, thanks very much. It's uh, James Reinel here from Middle East Eye. Um, you've spoken about Hezbollah's global reach. You mentioned Cyprus, Azerbaijan, Panama, Thailand, etc. We also know that the organization is active in Venezuela. Um, uh, they've had a long history there. But I'm wondering, are you following their activities since the political uh, discord erupted there? Um, have you seen any Hezbollah activities? Are they fundraising there? Are they rallying militias there in support of the Maduro regime? Uh, what, what is Hezbollah doing there, and uh, what are your observations on it? Um, there's certain things I can't say in this setting. What I, what I can tell you is something that will, of course, come as no surprise, and that is Hezbollah thrives in chaotic environments, such as the Syrian civil war, uh, such as in Yemen. Um, um, we know that Hezbollah has long had an active presence 
in the Western Hemisphere, particularly in the tri-border region uh, where Argentina and Brazil and Paraguay come together. Um, they exploit uh, their um, uh, presence there to raise a great deal of money um, and send it back home uh, where it can be used for the malign purposes with which we're all familiar. Thanks for the question. This gentleman here, and then we'll come over to this side. Uh, hi, I'm David Alandete from ABC in Spain. Uh, ha have you, continue with the Venezuelan question, uh, any links of these three people that you're identifying here with the Maduro regime or any commercial ties, companies that operate in the two, in the two uh, places? The three financiers that I discussed today, <clears throat> we have not identified publicly any particular business operations that they may have in Venezuela. However, we are focused on a number of other individuals who, in addition to operating corruptly in the Venezuelan economy, also have Lebanese passports. Let me take Lori, please. Um, Lori Milroy, Curtis. Lori Milroy, Curtis, and twenty-four. Are there ties between Hezbollah and the drug b industry in Latin and South America? Yes, there are. <clears throat> um, there are a number of Hezbollah financiers who, in addition to running various types of import-export businesses, I mentioned oil and petroleum type, type activities, but there are several Hezbollah financiers who are also involved in the drug trade. Mohammed Ibrahim Bazi is an excellent example of an individual who traffics in narcotics in addition to his other <clears throat> nefarious behaviors. Last week, for instance, we designated a money exchange house in Lebanon, the Choms Exchange, run by an individual who launders money, uh, extremely large amounts of money for narcotics organizations, including Colombian narcotics organizations, and who also moves money for Hezbollah. Uh, we'll go here and then here, sir. Thank you. Jafar al Jafar with Al Mayadeen. I'd like to take your uh, argument uh, you know, from a domestic Lebanese perspective, and that is the sanctions uh, you're imposing on uh, Hezbollah's finances and individuals and what have you. What are the ramifications for the normal Lebanese who usually deal with, you know, they rent apartments to uh, probably identified or non-identified Hezbollah uh, members, uh, buying groceries at the store, uh, getting medical, aid, medical uh, assistance, uh, uh, medical care, that is, and all other services. Aren't those uh, uh, sanctions going to impact innocent people in the, uh, along the way? Um, I imagine Marshall will have something to say about this as well, but let me just take a first crack at that. Um, these sanctions are pro-Lebanon. Make no mistake, the first victims of Hezbollah are the Lebanese people, um, because it's the Lebanese people who see uh, their resources siphoned off and squandered on military adventurism abroad, terrorism abroad, and terrorism at home. Um, the goal of U.S. policy with respect to Lebanon is to isolate and marginalize Hezbollah um, so that it can no longer play uh, the outsize and malign role that it does within the Lebanese political system. A, a policy whose goal is to benefit, is precisely to benefit the long-suffering Lebanese people. I think we have to be very clear <clears throat> that the kinds of social services that you're talking about, the use of credit cards, the access to finance, the ability to take out a loan to buy property, this all depends upon the strength and the stability of the Lebanese banking sector. When you talk about Lebanon, there are two main pillars of stability, right? The Lebanese Armed Forces and its financial sector. And I work very closely, we work in the Treasury Department extremely closely with Governor Riyad Salome and his vice governors to protect the Lebanese banking sector. It is vital that the governor of Lebanon understand that the protection of the Lebanese financial sector is jeopardized by Hassan Nasrallah and Hezbollah who attempt to make inroads into the banks. They need to stay out of the banking sector. Okay, let me take the question here, please. Uh, Rosh Dalla with Rundao TV. Uh, your new initiative, how, how do you see it uh, being received in Iraq? Uh, Hezbollah and the allies and their offshoots in Iraq through PMF have uh, allegedly are, are benefiting from even state institutions for financial means. Um, what, what do you see in terms of um, you know, working with the Iraqi government in that regard? 
Um, well, I think Iraq has um, a very keen interest in not being subjected to the same sorts of destabilizing domestic influences that we've seen in other countries where Hezbollah has, has played a malign role. Um, the United States and the government of Iraq and the people of Iraq, we all share a common interest in, in a vision for what Iraq should be, and that is uh, a strong and stable and prosperous democracy that is free from uh, outside malign influence. Um, friendship with the United States brings that about. Um, a, a strong uh, or even minimal Hezbollah presence is inconsistent with what we all want Iraq to be. I'd also simply further add that Hezbollah financiers are very active in Iraq. I mentioned Adam Tabaja. He maintains a construction company in Iraq. He's running around trying to get paid for various construction activities that he undertook. I think a number of Iraqi citizens stand to benefit should they come forward with information that leads to disruption of these kinds of networks. Let me take this question here and then I'll come back up. Uh, Voice of America, Turkish Service, Begum Dalmaz. My question will be on the Iran sanctions. U.S. today announced that it will no longer issue um, waivers to um, oil waivers um, to eight countries, including Turkey. Uh, and we know that uh, Mr. Blinksley um, held talks with the Turkish officials a few months ago. So I was wondering uh, if, based on your talks with the Turkish officials, uh, did Turkey promise to comply with the uh, sanctions and to go to zero? Thank you. I, that's a, a off topic for what we're here to talk about today, but I'd be happy to schedule a discussion with you at a later date. Okay. And we'll take this question here, please. Thank you very much, Mr. Kurt from Kurdistan TV. If Iranian regime continue to support Hezbollah publicly, what will be the USA reaction and next step by United States? And any comments about relationship between Hezbollah and Hajj al-Shaabi in Iraq? Thank you. Well, I, I think um, Iran is going to continue to support Hezbollah um, as they have for decades um, and as they have to the tune of by now many billions of dollars. Um, I think the United States response to this is going to be to continue to intensify the pressure, uh, cut off the flow of money to the terrorist regime in Tehran, cut off the flow of money to the regime's proxies around the world. Um, and we know that this is effective. We, we know it's effective because Hezbollah has told us that it's effective. Um, otherwise, Hassan Nasrallah would not be out with a tin cup trying to raise money that he previously was able to command uh, from his masters in Tehran. We have one more in the back. Uh, thank you, David Mirovsky, uh, Czech uh, Public TV. Uh, you've mentioned uh, these uh, three individuals. Uh, do you know where they are currently? Just right now, you mentioned they are active all around the world. So where they are just right now? And is the goal of uh, the American uh, administration to bring them to the justice on the American soil? Thank you. Well, I'm certainly not going to speculate as to whether we know where they are or they aren't. Um, um, our, the purpose of today's announcement is to offer reward money, bounty money, for anyone who comes forward with information that leads to disruption of the financial networks. And we very much look forward to compensating those who do so. One more question, sir. Ali Harb, I'm uh, Will your efforts target Hezbollah-linked individuals, uh, including officials in the pool political wing of Hezbollah, or will it focus on the organization itself? There's no such thing as a political wing of Hezbollah. It's one organization. It's a terrorist organization. And you don't have to take our word for it. You can take Hassan Nasrallah's word for it. Hassan Nasrallah rejects this false, convenient distinction between a political wing and a military wing. Um, in answer to the other part of your question, we will offer up to $10 million for information relating to the financing of the unified Hezbollah organization, including all uh, subsidiaries. Thanks. OK, we'll take, take your question, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Cal from Kurdistan 24 uh, after the fall of too many disputed areas in 2017 from the Kurdish uh, region of Iraq, 
it's very well known, and there are too many intelligence reports that a land bridge been opened from Iran through these disputed areas through Syria to Lebanon for supporting technical and logistic uh, capabilities to Hezbollah directly. There are too many reports for the intelligence, and it's very well known. So uh, do you believe that the KRG can play a role in reducing the influence the, the, from, from this land bridge by, by supporting the, the go back for the Peshmerga much more to that places? Thank you. Um, we would be grateful for the assistance of any responsible party um, to shine a light on Hezbollah's malign activity as well as that of its Iranian enablers. I, I would say we have a very good relationship with the KRG uh, on these kinds of financial matters, and we appreciate greatly their support. All right, and this will be our last question for Simon. <coughs> My name is Simon Ateba from Today News Africa here in Washington, D.C. I was wondering if you see any connection between Boko Haram and some terrorist organization in Africa with money from Iran. Thank you. Um, l let me answer that question at a slightly higher uh, level of generality. We, we know that um, Iran-backed terrorist organizations are active in Africa. We know that Hezbollah in particular is active in Africa, um, uh, raising money um, throughout the continent. Um, I believe the Treasury Department issued a number of designations some months ago uh, focusing on Hezbollah activity in Africa. And, and one of the front companies that, st that stood out to me was a pig farm, I think in Liberia? Yeah. The, the Hezbollah pig farm in Liberia. So, so we know that these uh, malign actors um, are very active on the continent, and uh, we, we look forward to partnering with governments there uh, to cut off a flow of money back to, uh, back to Hezbollah. Right, and with that, I will close today's briefing. I want to thank our briefers very much for coming in today. As you are departing, there are a number of materials that are available for you uh, with further details about today's briefing. And I also want to take a moment to introduce the new State Department spokesperson, Ms. Morgan Artagas, who's here today to observe how we do things at the FPC. Thank you all very much.